Hello, I'm another Magenta Dev. Welcome to another video. The final video in sort of a series, it's turned out to be a series of three. So check out, I'll put the links up there, check out how to create a block and basically how to use the block correctly within a module, well within the theme and then within a module. Um, how to get started with Knockout JS, and now the final instalment, the difficult third series, how to make some JavaScript work dynamically within Knockout JS. And what I mean by that is, what's the point of using Knockout JS if you're not going to update the element? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to update the element. We're going to create a timer, a countdown timer, like a, an offer timer. Um, using all the tools we've got in our arsenal within within Magento and within Knockout JS. So, without any sort of further ado, we're also gonna so we're gonna look at JS. We're gonna look at including um, other plugins within Knockout to be used in your module, and we're also gonna look real basic CSS inclusion in a module as well. So that's basically what we're gonna cover. So where we left off was essentially here. We we, we assuming you've watched that video, come back, we're on to the advanced stuff. If you know that if you know to the basic usage of of knockout then we're on, we're on to the advanced stuff so all i've done since the last video i've removed a, a tag that was in here that was that was getting the product name um which i'll just i'll just get rid of for now we're gonna we're gonna try and get um the date dynamically soon so i'll just pop that in there as like a, a to do a placeholder but essentially the timer is gonna be output into a HTML file this HTML file here this is what's currently in it but we're gonna we're gonna put a timer in it and um, this was like for testing last time so I'll just clear that out and the JavaScript file has still got all my old sort of stuff in it and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna raise the bar a little bit here we're gonna so right in. I think the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna get rid of these I'm gonna start from that me scratch the first thing I'm gonna go through is how to um, basically we want a countdown timer so we want to make that as simple as possible obviously you search in a search engine for countdown timer JavaScript and you're gonna get you're gonna get stack overflows explaining how to write a countdown timer in JavaScript but we're Magento devs we ain't got time for for that shit so we're gonna use a plugin and I'm gonna use countdown JS so you probably heard of moment JS which is a good little uh, time and date formatter well countdown JS is it does exactly what it says um, it's a countdown plugin. So I've just downloaded the, you get a minified version. You can, as I say, you can search for it. I'll put the links in the description. It's, it's just for to help us out uh, to speed this, this tutorial up. So, but the, this raises a good question. How do I include this for use in here, right? Well, there's a specific way you can do it with Magento, like, like always. So what you need is, and it sits in the front end folder, is a require js hyphen config dot js right and this is what and, and this is obviously my plugin uh, my wizard here and, and, it, and it's helping me out so this is the one i need i need to map this uh script so i'm going to call it countdown and then i'm going to simply write the path to where it is so it's in adam countdown which is the plugin and then it's in um web JS plugin countdown JS. So I'm going to specify the path, and this will make mean that I'm able to use countdown uh, countdown JS plugin in my uh, knockout, which is a knockout timer JS here. Right, then. so I'm just going to going to save that for now. Right, then. Um, and now I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to I'm going to do a quick deploy. I'm just going to check that everything looks right at the static end, which I always like to do because we like to show our working out on this channel. So there's the static, and that deploy should have um, bobbed my. Yeah, there we are. All right. Um, right. And another way you can check that this is working is if you jump onto the front end um, and you do a search for. Um, you refresh first. And you do a search for what was it? Countdown. Yeah. So there it is. Look. Uh, 
that's my counting on timer. Right, it's not working yet because I'm not using it yet. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use I'm gonna use it. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this bit started. So I'm gonna start with the with the JS because it'll all become sort of a bit more um, easier to understand if I start using it. So um, all I've got to do is I've got to define it up here, and then the plugin says I can use a variable called countdown so here's a little bit of boilerplate code I cheated a little bit I wrote, I wrote this earlier just to make sure it all work um, and I'm just gonna just so you can see I'm not gonna hook it up here and um, reload time which is what I wanted to do I want a sort of countdown to a to a variable so I'm gonna say reload time function and then it's gonna be standard sort of JavaScript function comma there um, right so this is this is where I would start so I, I just wrote this for calculating the time and an account so I'm gonna replace this with a variable soon but for now we're just gonna we're gonna get things we're gonna get things working and rolling so if I just do that and I just do a yarn flush okay I'm not using this variable yet so I best do that so I'm gonna add this clock variable up into my defaults and what I'm going to do with the clock variable is I'm going to make it an observable. Um, which we touched on observables, touched on it in the last tutorial, but also have a search for countdown and have a look at it, uh, sorry, for knockout and, um, and and have a read up on observables. I'm not going to go too far in it, but it, essentially it does what it's saying there. It's going to observe, observe this data point here. And the beauty of these types of frameworks, it's the same when you're using something like view. Um, these things can be manipulated outside of page load and and be utilized to show different data with the right um with the right type of um DOM refresh, with the right type of command. And within within knockout, it's it's KO observable. Right. So this is gonna work out. This is why count obviously I don't have to Count, uh, calculate any dates it, with countdown JS, so I can use countdown now. I've got it, got it in there. I just have to pass it a now date or, or a date to count from, and a, and a date to count to. That's all I have to do. So that that made things a lot easier for me. Um, and then I'm just gonna put in a real simple uh, set interval function here, which is a real simple sort of vanilla JavaScript function, um, and I'm gonna. Um, utilize my function I've just written so reload time um, and I'm going to bind it and I'm going to bind it to this and I'm going to make it refresh um, every 1000 milliseconds which is a second so it's going to count down in seconds um, for now that's how it's going to work so we touched on everything has to be sort of Appended with this super in in knockout JS, so don't forget that. And then we've essentially just got a um, we've got all our functions sort of sort of built built now. Um, and I'm just gonna give this a refresh on the front end and see if there. Right, this is this is the bit I wanted to show you. Look. My request now I'm utilizing countdown. Obviously nothing's working yet. It's going to give me an error because um, clock isn't being sort of used. There, it'll be there somewhere. There you go. Um, time scope and kind of it, it, it's all it's all falling apart because the wrong variables are in the HTML. But we're going to go and re, we're going to go and repair that in a second. But first of all, I just wanted to touch on require JS, and that's um, that's working as expected. There, look, I've got my countdown plugin saved to the page. Um, and I'm now able to um, to use it to, to, to work with it. So um, the next thing, I'll get this JavaScript bit finished. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get timer. So I'm gonna write a specific function that I'm gonna then utilize in my um, HTML file. So I'm gonna say get timer and in this timer, I'm just literally going to get. I'm going to return the clock, uh, the clock variable. Um, this clock. I'm going to return the clock, clock variable, not not a function. It's, it's just a variable. Um, and then I'm going to basically output this this 
function. I, I'm going to utilize this function so we on the HTML. So the last time we sort of looked at knockout, we was here. We was just rendering sort of a string, so some sort of static goings on here. Right. Well, now we're gonna we're gonna raise it, and, and what I'm going to show you here is that remember in the last one also we data band we use data band here and then we use data band for a title so data band is 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 you, you can utilize it in in your html templates as well so we're going to say div and we're going to data band um, and we're going to data band our function um, our function is oh, i didn't copy it did i uh it was get timer and, and that's how you would reference it. Again, it's similar to similar to other JavaScript frameworks. It's just that we're using it, you know, with the Magento way, if you like, which um, isn't isn't um, isn't too different. It's it's just it's just the way the the their implementation of not implementation of knockout works and it, it, across files and, and things like that, which is fine. So it's a text value as well. Already reloaded. There we go. So our time is working, um, lovely. So now, um, obviously, you know that that's covered a, a couple of disciplines off, and you can see, obviously, it's 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 um, it's refreshing the element or this this part this you know that the KO observable. It's refreshing it every second, which which is great. So next thing we're going to do in the module is. We're just gonna we're just gonna write some we're just gonna style that up just slightly. Um, so we're gonna add a class to it and call it timer. And then this is a way to so I thought I'd just cover off a way to add CSS to to your module. Okay. So we need a CSS folder. And then in this CSS folder, well, I'll come back to that actually in the layout folder, we need to specify our uh, CSS in the in the header essentially. Um, so in here we're going to go new file we're going to say default dot xml similar to how you would do in a theme what i've talked about plenty of times and i'm just going to paste in this boilerplate code because i wrote it earlier it saves you watching me type it out but what i'm going to do here is i'm going to tell the plugin to look for a, a file called custom css i'll tell the module to look for it now you don't have to put you don't just come ahead in here and put custom css in there you can actually use less in here, and Magento will compile that less to uh, to actual CSS code. Now I don't generally use less, but this is like quite Magento core, Magento standard. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to share it with you. Um, so we're going to say background color of say orange, a color of white, um, and padding. Of ten pixels, and then a border of black. So this is gonna look great. Uh, but just to just to sort of get get something get something on there. Okay, there we go. We've got our ticker. We've got our countdown timer. Excellent. And it's styled, so so that was the correct implementation of, of CSS for, for this, and it, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad, um, right? So now that's obviously just counting down to a static date. That's obviously just counting down. We'll just get rid of these. That's just counting down to um, where is it? This date here. Okay then, so let's make this thing dynamic. Let's let's utilize the power of Magento. The whole reason why we sort of use it in the combination in combination with um, JavaScript and knock out and why we're going to the trouble um, right we'll make it dynamic so all I've done is I have put a product the product we're working on the beans uh, on sale until um, I'll say they're on sale to 99p um, on sale until the 9th of the 9th like the price isn't important it's the um, it's the special price from and to date that, that are important so I'm going to have a countdown to the date, the, the, the date that they come off sale. So to indicate to customers that they're going to get it for that's still the, the uh, static date that I've put in. Um, that they're going to get the um, they're going to get the beans at 99 p until until this specific date. So what do we do? 
how do we how do we get that so well the, the first bit's quite easy we just need to get the um we need to get the date off the product and that, that because we're getting the product up here which i showed in the first sort of video and it's dead simple uh straightforward but i extended the the magento class that that gives us this, this information so now it's freely available um in my in my module you'll have to check that video out to uh, see how i did that but anyway we're going to get the special um what was it get i think it's special price to date i think i think it's that um i'll just check i'll tell you what this is how i would find out bonus bonus feature right then um i'd have a look at the field just to remind myself basically um special two date so you'll you'll see what i'll do in a minute in a minute special two date so it's that right that's going to get it and i'm going to i'm just going to test it i'm going to echo it it should be it should be output as a string um should be output as a string so i'm going to see if it works yeah so it is it's special two date so that's a good way of just having a look in the admin and seeing what the name is and then working it out because obviously you could do get data as well but you know that that's another way you could get it um where was i i was here right and so now i'm just going to echo this in my date field here and pass this through i think i had echo didn't i um and pass this through to my javascript um, need that. Pass this variable through to my JavaScript module, um, my JavaScript component e even. So how do we get this into the JavaScript component? Well, we, we it's simple, isn't it? We touched on it in the other video, but I'll go over it again. Right, config can be passed into into the initialized function, and then I need to create really, I need to create a, a, a default variable really, if I'm doing it properly. Um, what shall I say? Sale. Obviously, you can call it anything you want. And I want to make it uh, observable just for good practice. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the clock variable there. And now I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to use sale here, so I can go this sale, and that'll that'll give me the sale in the end date, which is what I'm after. But also, I'm going to say this um, sale because I've specified it up there equals and then config dot date and i'm getting date as a variable in in the config array which is what i'm passing from from here so that's why i'm using date in there and then i'm passing it to sale and then i'm using sale there right so let's give this a quick quick refresh there we go eight days it's eight days from now so the time has time has changed um yeah so so that's how that's how you do it and as you can see it's counting down um it's counting down it's doing it's doing its thing obviously you could do a bit more around it you could put some more um words around it you could say on sale until and, and all that but i think that gives you the gist of of how these things can work and how you can get some really rich functionality in your magento 2 using knockout js so there is I was always of that. I've thought. I mean, to be fair, you can do this sort of thing with jQuery, but why not use Knockout? Keep it nice and tidy in a module. Magento says it's good. I agree. I say it's good. If you like this type of content, please like and, and on the video and subscribe to my channel because I'm full of this sort of shit. And please put a comment on there as well and and discuss things, ask me questions. I, I love out like that. Um, yeah. Um, I enjoyed that and uh, I will see you in the next one.